Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Eric, call sign N1JUR. And today I've got another three iOS ham radio apps that I think you're gonna enjoy. So let's get into it. All right, today we're gonna dive into a DMR lookups using ham radar. I'll leverage the DX cluster uh, for maybe your next de-expedition. And we're gonna look a little deeper into a multifunction app that might make you feel like you're in an episode of the Clone Wars. So as always, I leave all the links uh, to all these apps in the description below. And if you've got an app you'd like me to review uh, or include, uh, please post it in the comments below and we'll make sure to get into our next episode. So let's get into the first app. So our first app is called Ham Radar. And so let's head on over to uh, my smartphone here. And we're gonna go into Ham Radar. And so this was a user submitted uh, suggestion uh, from Drifting Plastic. Uh, so I appreciate your uh, submission and recommendation. This is a free app and I downloaded it off the App Store. Uh, again, you can just search for Ham Radar or use the link uh, in the description. This app kind of uh, is, a, we'll say, a, one of those Swiss Army knife type applications. It, it provides a, a pretty simple interface, as we can see here, to be able to look up by call sign uh, or look up by DMR ID um, as it pulls data from several sources, um, specifically the DMR ID database. So say like I was just gonna pull up uh, KC5 uh, HWB's uh, call sign here, and we'll just do a quick search. And it comes up with, um, you know, basically everything you would find if you went up to the DMR ID website, um, or you say went to uh, QRZ and queried uh, by call sign. Um, it's pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, the print features and the map features aren't too bad. You know, for most of the, the stuff, uh, it's pulling again from the FCC database based off of registration and the like. Um, but for all intents and purposes, most of this stuff is pretty much, you know, available, you know, via those direct sites themselves. Uh, it's nice to have obviously on a mobile app, um, but from a standpoint of like being able to maybe copy and paste this in somewhere else or use it uh, or leverage it in a different uh, way, uh, it kind of um, comes up uh, a little short in that area. But so let's kind of go through it. It's got some other features that aren't specifically DMR related that are built into the app, which you know, can be handy if you're a, a new uh, ham. Um, the first one obviously is the Elmer and they've got an AI bot that they've built into this and you can ask it simple questions like I did, what's the best antenna? And it pulled the pretty much everything you pull off of chat GPT, um, which is not too bad. Um, you know, again, if you're looking for a quick answer or you're trying to pop in a formula or you're trying to get, um, you know, how to calculate an antenna length, you know, this, this tool might be handy to have available. Um, again, it's heavily um, internet related, so, uh, or internet dependent. So you're gonna have to, you know, obviously have that, um, you know, cell phone signal to be able to, you know, obviously use that capability. Um, the other component it has built into it is called, um, or it basically opens up um, Web uh, um, RX, so basically the Web SDR uh, tool. And, you know, again, this is all available um, through uh, Web SDR. You can go to their URL. This happens to go to the developer's specific Web SDR interface, which is nice um, because if, you know, you, you never used one before, it's great. It would be really uh, nice, and I'll mention this in kind of a summary, if the, the app was a little bit more integrated in terms of, you know, being able to have all this functionality in the interface and not have to bounce between windows and stuff like that. Because if you notice that once I open up one, I got to close one and go from there. The blog uh, is a nice um, feature. I don't think it's as any more useful than if I go to ARL's website or I go to any other um, website that does uh, content uh, that's ham radio really. It's definitely nice and, and good to have some of this information. The content looks pretty consistent, you know, in terms of the, the time that it's being delivered, but it's kind of an inconsistent format source. So if you like casual reading, it might be beneficial there. Um, but overall, I think, um, you know, for a simple free app and a, a good semi-decent, well-designed interface, it does the job. I would probably like to see more features with it being able to integrate into the DMR well, world. Um, I don't use a whole lot of DMR myself. I do have an all-star hotspot, 
uh, with my DMR ID enabled and I do get into Brandmeister and a few others here and there. Um, but I really don't leverage or have the tools to leverage this, but maybe if there was a way to be able to build in uh, integration into other apps that leverage um, those communication paths like Echo Link and things like that, which would be really, really cool to do and have built in one app. But for you know being able to do quick lookups, it's, uh, you know, it's very handy. And so that is uh, Ham Radar. And so if you're uh, inter inter interested in the DMR world, this might be a good way. All right, this next app is called iOS DX Cluster. Uh, it's also referred uh, to in the app store as WWDX Cluster View. Um, it's um, a free app and uh, very uh, somewhat useful um, in its functionality, but let's get into it and I'll kind of explain what I see. It, it covers all of the bands in the DX Cluster, which is great. Uh, has a nice simple filter. So if I want to just say filter out the, the 20 meter DX cluster spots, I can do that. It is very basic in the interface itself. So uh, at a first glance, when I went into it and looked at it, you would see that, you know, it gives you the, the details of what's been posted on the cluster and the mode, which is great, but it's really kind of just, you know, one line with a bunch of carriage returns. It doesn't really offer any Flex a you know more flexible format where you can look at it at a quick glance and read that you know this call sign and here's another line for frequency and here's another line for mode and all of that uh, that it would be better well organized but you know um, it, it definitely pulls that information and it's real time you can then tap on the uh, you know the right arrow and or if you want to tap on the actual pointer arrow which is the compass arrow it still brings you to the cluster maps page which you know is, is nice. Um, but you know, from what I can do with this information, eh, not really much. I mean, there's not like, it's, just, it's great to have a map there, but like, what's the purpose? Like I'm obviously going to be working them, but if there was some other way that, you know, that the information could be more beneficial, um, especially on a mobile app where I'm looking for quick access to stuff. Uh, I think the developer kind of uh, shortchanged the design there or really didn't fully complete it. Um, and the about us page is, is pretty basic. The support site goes to his uh, Twitter account, which kind of tells me that they were sort of doing this app, but then realized that they just didn't have the time and uh, uh, wherewithal to be able to finish putting some attention to it. So it just kind of, um, you know, rotted there on the iOS uh, apps, uh, you know, uh, store. So I, all in all, there are several other DX cluster apps that I'll cover later that I'm, um, you know, I've gone through that uh, rival this by uh, almost night and day. So. From a standpoint, I would say steer kind of clear from this. It's a free app. It does offer some good information, but the information is just really kind of useless in my mind, especially when you want something more of a DX cluster type app. And there are many more that I've reviewed and a few that I've reviewed in the past. Uh, so I would look to those um, and kind of steer clear of this one. And so that is uh, iOS DX cluster. This last and final app of uh, this episode uh, is uh, a user submitted one. Uh, Mike N2MAK uh, has uh, submitted this over to me, said I should definitely check it out. It's called Theodolite. Uh, it is an app that is, we'll say, a little uh, out of the norm in terms of uh, you know it being ham radio, but very functional and useful in the ham radio world. I, I find this this app a um, a great well-designed app um, i'm gonna state up front that it is a paid app and if you're not used to paying um uh any money for apps that you might get sticker shock of the nine dollar uh charge for the app itself but i would say that it's not one that you're going to regret downloading especially if you do a lot of sodas you don't to do a lot of outdoor uh activations and you you know like to use apps that do compass and elevation and a number of geo-like uh, overlays. So this app, I have uh, other video that I'm gonna go into because of the orientation of the way this app is, it's not gonna show you much. So I um, will show you some screenshots in as I kind of talk through this a little bit uh, that both Mike has provided and I have a little video too as well that I did with it uh, just outside uh, my front, uh, front door here. but. Um, off the top, it's got a great um, bunch of additional paid uh, options like the watch companion app, which I thought is really cool because it has 
um, the compass and rangefinder and a few other features on the watch face display so you can just use it right from your wrist. It's got uh, real-time data for a Latin longitude, your compass, uh, angle of horizon, um, and a great rangefinder, and it's all AR based. So in essence, you can look at things and um, you know see it in a real time space. So a uh, great app to be able to like look at objects from a distance and be able to get accurate um, distance uh, from your current location. Um, it's got a great calibration com uh, component where you can calibrate it to the horizon. So if you're trying to do a little satellite work, um, it works perfect there. Or if, say you're on a soda, um, you know, a hike and you're trying to figure out the distance and elevation and, and change um, as well as a, either an object or to the peak, um, this is an app that would definitely do that. So. Um, for the money, it's definitely well worth it. And again, I thank Mike for uh, providing the recommendation. I'm going to continue to, you know, learn more about this app. The developer has done a really, really great job um, with setting it up and being able to create a user manual um, that I think is really well written and um, really good quality in terms of understanding the app and learning how to use it and learning how to leverage all of the components. It's got a great functionality that um, in some of the screenshots I'll show you that Mike sent me were from the app on one of his pod activations he had done in the past. And it, all of those were taken from within the app and stored in your photo roll and, and allowed you to leverage it. You can send you know contents and Latin longitude information to email. So if you're using it for you know a project or something else. So again, like I said, thanks to Mike for the, the app suggestion there. And that is uh, Theodolite. All right, well, there you have it. Those are the three apps for this episode. It was Ham Radar, uh, iOS, a DX cluster, and Theodolite. Thanks again to uh, the two uh, folks that uh, offered um, the recommendations. And so if you've got an app, that uh, you want me to review and check out, um, leave it in the comments below and I will be happy to check it out and uh, you know, let you know uh, and uh, share that with, the, with my community. And uh, again, if you have any comments or feedback uh, about any of these apps, uh, feel free to check the, uh, you know, put them in the comments below. And uh, as always, make sure you like and subscribe and share. Uh, and I have a playlist that'll show at the end of all the other additional iOS app reviews uh, and feel free to check those out and uh, let me know uh, what you think. So with that, thanks again for watching and seventh.